avoidance behavior with ADHD. My guess is that you've probably faced this or you face this on a regular basis. So I'm here to talk to you about why having an avoidant uh, behavior, I'm not going to say that it's a personality, it's an avoidant behavior because it can be learned and you can change it, okay? Why it doesn't have to be a part of your every single day, that you can work your way around this part of you that wants to skirt something that is not comfortable. Um, and the reason that we do this is because our brains, every human, is geared towards what we want to be certain, we want things to be pleasant, we want things to be enjoyable, and we want things to be easy, right? So anything that gets us outside of that, which would be, say, a task, maybe in your business, that is just not comfortable. Maybe it's one where you just it requires so much mental energy. For me, anything to do with finances and invoicing and all this stuff, it, it's, it's interesting. It's not that I can't do it. It's just that it takes me extra time to figure it out around it. So we're going to call this one the avoider. And they actually have names for these saboteurs. Okay, so today I'm talking about the avoider part of you that wants to do something and still can't find the time, the priority, or the gumption to get started with it. Or maybe you get started with it, but you don't finish it. And there's good reason for that. Often we don't see ourselves as the leaders that we are. We don't see ourselves as really competent in all different areas. And there's certain ones for me where I definitely face that. And so it's easier to procrastinate. And I had my coach talk to me about how cool procrastination is when you think about it from like a simplicity angle. The greatest way to get enjoyment out of something is to procrastinate because basically it's a win right away. Like you're just like, I'm just not going to do it. I'm just, just literally not going to do it because something, something isn't as important enough that like you have to do it. Now, when we're in business, it's different than having a job. When you have a job and you have tasks that you have to do, you end up doing them because there are results from that. There's consequences, right? But when we're in business, we can avoid what's uncomfortable. I can avoid sales conversations all the time if I want, but am I going to really build a solid business? Are you going to build a solid business doing that? I can avoid having uncomfortable conversations with my husband and, you know, dance around them but is that really going to solve the problem so the whole point of this is to take a look at it and be like okay i acknowledge and notice that this is an area that i struggle with so how can i deal with that well i can start small i can start small and chunk it down how can i bite off this elephant one bite at a time you're not obviously going to go all in at once i'm sure you've heard that term before about like you can't eat an elephant in one meal. So you just take little small bites at it over time and eventually you get there. If you just have one thing that you can push yourself towards doing, the biggest thing I found is that the anchor reminds you of your why. So an anchor is a physical object. This is my little squirrel, Aaron, but also like this bracelet, for instance, my kids gave me a charm bracelet and we all have one that's matching. And so I'm reminded of my why around my kids. And you may have, you know, a picture on your phone or on your wall that you can anchor into. Why are you avoiding it in the first place? Okay, so you take a look at, well, what's going to be the benefit if I do this? And if I choose to do it and it sucks, what's going to be the outcome of that? So you can kind of play that game with yourself in your mind a little bit, like play the game. What's going to be worse if I don't do it or if I do it and I fail? Generally, it's if you don't do it, because if you avoid it, it's going to build up over time, continue to spiral, and it's going to compound, and then eventually you're going to end up in a mess. Our ADHD brains are like, yeah, there's some drama coming my way. There's some drama coming my way. So subconsciously, we actually create that because we like spontaneity. We like things to be exciting. We like things to give us dopamine rushes, right? And I get a, such a dopamine rush when I know that I have a deadline on something and I have to write notes for it or content or whatever. But at the same time, it's gonna leave you anxious. This is not so much fun as 
let's just go all in, give it a shot, ask for help, see what you need to do, pare it down, start small. And then the other thing is look forward to the future. So that can be a reward system. Hey, if I do this, I get to go do this. Or I know the benefit is going to be pretty great and it might benefit someone else if I carry through in what I'm avoiding right now. And you can play that game with yourself, like play it as a game. What could be the outcome of this? What could be the gift and the opportunity built into me not avoiding this? So you're outsmarting that part of you that thinks, ah, I just want to go for pleasant and enjoyable. Plus, let's, let's be honest, pleasant and enjoyable would be like hanging out, watching Netflix all night after you had a crazy day and just chilling, drinking wine or <laughs> whatever. Like, but is that growth? Is that going to get you to where you need to go? Sure, it certainly isn't going to in business. And so you have times for that. But if you continue to do that, you can also get into binge behavior, which I will tell you. I have avoided a lot of tasks by binging series in the past with Netflix. At one point, I binged like an entire series. The scandal of all things, terrible for the mindset. But how did that help me? It didn't. It just kept me in this like world of, oh my gosh, what's the next thing that's going to happen? And meanwhile, all this other stuff was piling up and it left me more and more anxious. And it's just not helpful for our mental wellness. So how can you problem solve what you're trying to avoid? Well, often that comes from talking to someone about it. It can come from just writing it out. Like, why the heck am I avoiding this? I do have um, a resource for you called 10 minutes to focus your creative ADHD mind. And in 10 minutes, you can basically get to the core of what it is that you're trying to avoid. So you can take steps against this by creating something against your saboteur called your sage brain. I'm going to talk more about the sage brain because that is positive intelligence. It's called mental fitness. And I'm just going to show you one really, really basic one right now. So it's hard for our brains to focus in on one thing. I get it. Even as you're watching this, you're probably on your phone or maybe you're hearing this or you're doing dishes or you're doing like six different things at once. Or your mind is going to different things. And I get that. That's me all the time. But what can you do to be present? And being present is through your senses. Your senses cost you nothing. Sight, touch, hearing, smell. Sight, touch, hearing, smell. Taste. The five senses that we all learned in kindergarten. But it's amazing what you can do when you get mindful and intentional about being present. So when you have your hands together like this, all that you need to do is simply feel what it's like on your fingertips. Just notice this feeling right now is kind of ticklish a little bit, but it's forcing me to pay attention to this because there's synapses firing in my brain being like, ah, it's kind of ticklish. I can't be thinking about the other thing right now. It's actually causing me to breathe a little bit lower. I'm not feeling so anxious. I'm doing a live video and it's a little nerve wracking, but at the same time, I'm like, no, I'm doing this. I can get into my lower energy vibration in terms of parasympathetic state. If you're up here, you're anxious. It's like your sympathetic nervous system is on overdrive. The goal is to calm, ease, flow. Not because it's a low energy vibration, but it's a lower energy state so that your anxiety, it, it's at bay. And the smallest things that we can do with our hands is just touching different parts of your body, even doing this. Just moving your fingertips back and forth. These are so tiny little things that you can do at any time, but they're called PQ reps. And PQ reps are powerful because they're little bursts of focus that you give yourself every hour or so. And the other thing you can do is when you're in a task and say you need to take a break, maybe you have your Apple Watch or a watch that tells you like when to stand, I know I do, it's like time for a break. Do you take that break? Do you avoid the break? Do you just keep going and get it all done? And then you realize, well, where'd my time go? What if you were to plan out your day and you notice that you need a transition time? You can do these small mindful breaks to get you into the next step, the next transitional space by releasing what you're holding. Simple stuff like just 
even saying the word like I release I release what just happened the next moment is what matters the next hour that I am in action maybe I'm meeting with a client maybe I'm working at my store maybe I'm meeting with you know a potential customer or maybe it's just time to be mom and I don't want to have that other stuff on me Brendan Burchard just had a video out talking about this it was powerful and it said release the tension and then set the intention so even before I came on here today, I set the intention. I was like, okay, how can I show up and serve powerfully in a way that makes sense so that my words aren't all jumbled? I set the intention that whoever needs to hear this at this time is going to hear it and that it's gonna benefit their life in some way. So when we can release, get into like that lower state of just flow, we're not gonna have so much anxiety. When we have something to look forward to because we're no longer avoiding it, we're going to feel more compelled to take action and build momentum. Okay, so that is how habit change starts. It actually starts with the thoughts in our mind at the beginning. Like, how am I seeing this? If I can change how I see this in my thoughts, it's actually going to change how I feel. And if I can change how I feel into how like, I want to be feeling like, yeah, I'm avoiding this task and it sucks and it causes me to be courageous. And I don't know what the outcome's gonna be, but let's just see, it could be fun. I know that if I'm feeling like excited about something, then my behavior and my actions are gonna coincide with that. If you're stuck in Stucksville, that's where you step in and you're like, you write it out. You give yourself a chance to be like, okay, what's my brain telling me? And I have a chance for you to do that. So if you want to download my resource, 10 minutes to focus your creative ADHD mind, please do. I'll put the link below. I hope that was helpful for you today. Avoidance behavior doesn't have to be your every day. Just know that. And if you have any questions about this topic, please do drop a note below, DM me. I'm happy to support you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.